Hey folks, it's Jessica Leia here. Hey. Thanks for joining me today on Me and My Song. Hey, in case you don't know about me much, I uh, was kind of feeling like a rock star that the world chewed up and spat out. <laughs> See? So I gathered together all the hand-me-down cameras I could find and I invented this show, Me and My Song, where I could share my music with you because, well, that's all I've ever wanted to do. So I'm gonna meet you right here every week and do just that. The first week of every month, I'm gonna to introduce to you a brand new song in the Raw Review. Then I'm gonna sing it for ya. On the second week of every month, I'm gonna take that same song to the chopping block. Where it's gonna get chopped a bit, and we're gonna decide what pieces stay and what pieces go before we bring it into a recording studio. Then I'm gonna sing it for ya. On weeks three and four, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes while we record the basic tracks of the songs with the bands and then the final vocals. Then I'm gonna sing it for ya. So come along! This ride is full of singing and dancing and laughter and love. And I think we can all do for more of that stuff in our lives. Yeah? Yeah. But just like any ride, it's no fun to go alone. So come on along. Let me sing you my songs. Why not? Welcome. To me. And my song. So my grandfather wrote this song as an ode to my grandmother. She died. This song is breathtaking and perhaps it says all there is to say about their love affair. But I think having some of the knowledge of the details behind that love affair makes the song all that much sweeter. See, their union was a long lasting one and certainly one of love, but it was born out of tragedy. A devout Catholic and mother of five, my grandmother found herself widowed by my grandfather Keith. At the ripe old age of 34, old maid, <laughs> this is an old maid. Unfortunately, he took his own life. And there certainly would have been shame for any woman in that era were that to occur. As if a husband's suicide clearly had something to do with some deficiency in his wife. I know that her parents said some not so kind things, very suggestive of the fact that maybe perhaps it was a little bit her fault. Messed up, so messed up, super duper, totally messed up. People, if someone kills themselves, it's not ever your fault. Ever. It's not ever your fault. Ever. It's not. Could you imagine being a woman in 1965, suddenly alone with five kids and a deceased spouse? I don't know how she came out of the whole thing with her sanity still intact. I don't think it was intact for a few years from the stories I've heard. <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever gets their sanity fully re-intacted after stuff like that. This planet's rough. It's a rough one here. But as fate would have it, there was a handsome young fellow just down the road who had recently suffered his own extreme loss. A lieutenant commander and father of four. <laughs> My grandfather had just lost his wife, Joyce, to breast cancer. Yep, it was killing women folk back then too. So there they were, the widow and the widower, and a gaggle of misplaced, deeply damaged, broken-hearted children. Oh, well, it was a regular old depressing as shit Brady Bunch. It's a story. I'm sorry, Dad, and aunties and uncles, that you had to go through all that. You got off to a rough start. <laughs> no wonder you're all so messed up in the head. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Sort of. I love you, you know I do, you know I love you. Grandma and Grandpa were married within months of each of their respective spouses' deaths. Can you imagine that? You lose your love and three months later you're hitched again? 
What? That's crazy. But it was the 1960s and grandma wasn't going to do too good without a husband bringing home the bacon. <laughs> and uh, grandpa wasn't going to do too good without a woman to tend to the children and to the household. Now, they weren't geographically very far from the hippie movement, actually, where a new relationship between men and women was being developed. But uh, they didn't participate in it. <laughs> I don't even think Grandma ever smoked weed. It seems a damn shame. I have often wondered at the deep and complex feelings that they must have had to navigate through together in the early stages of their marriage. I know there's no way that either one of them had come anywhere close to finishing the grieving process they needed to go through at the loss of their respective spouse. Did they truly love each other? Was it a marriage of necessity and uh, Love came later as they built a home together and raised nine children. <laughs> See that? I can count. I'm like, nine. I can count. <laughs> Did they cling to each other for comfort as they both suffered through the deep grief that they were struggling with? Or did they perhaps feel an underlying resentment towards each other as they ached for the one that they just lost only to wake up in the morning to find somebody else? Was it okay for them to just cry together, both of them knowing that new love wasn't going to fix the wounds that had been inflicted upon them both? Or was there some unspoken agreement to just suck it up and get on with life? Of course, I'm just speculating all of this. I don't know what mess of emotions they had to work through untangling together. Grandma wasn't exactly the warm and fuzzy type who would have like intimate conversations with you in, in that regard. <laughs> and I could talk to Grandpa about it, I suppose, but the guy won't put his hearing aids in, and that makes it a little difficult to have nuanced conversations. <laughs> yes, Grandpa, I'm talking shit. Put in your hearing aids so you can hear me talk shit better. <laughs> what? I came to know my grandparents many years later. When the deep scarring of all of the pains from the past was still evident and every family member, but when the wounds themselves had for some time been healed. Grandma was always a stoic character, you know, she was larger than life. She was a woman of great strength and confidence. You can say whatever you want about character flaws, but that woman was strong. You could sit with her and feel cocooned by that strength. She was the sort of person who always inquired about the details of your life and was actually interested in hearing about them. <laughs> and if you ever made her laugh, man, you felt like a million bucks. I don't know, maybe it was that old lady cackle and the smoker's cough that made her laugh so robust, but <laughs> it was always great to hear. That woman lived like the last 57 years of her life without going to the doctors, not once. She refused. <laughs> Till she started kicking the bucket, of course. <laughs> and she refused to wear anything on her feet except for high heels, up until she couldn't walk anymore. Then she didn't have to worry about shoes so much. That chick rocked. Her stern and curt disposition was always a, a good contrast for my grandfather, who was kind of the jovial, sensitive sort of fellow. <laughs> Grandpa's the sort of guy who was always taking time to hang out with us kids. He would make us toys out of the scraps of wood that he had in his garage. And he taught us how to fish. And he taught us what was safe to eat and what wasn't safe to eat out in the redwood forests where we would run wild as children. <laughs> But most importantly, thank you, Grandpa, for teaching us poker. <laughs>
I fold. Grandpa played the clarinet in his school band, so he kind of knew music, and he was always my only music buddy growing up. <laughs> He's so funny. He's always singing songs from the 1930s and 40s, but not very well. <laughs> it's not like he doesn't have a good singing voice, he just like doesn't ever know the words. For most of my life, until I actually learned the song, I thought that as time goes by, only ever had two lines in it. <laughs> the rest of the song was dooby dooby wah, boop dooby dooby wah. <laughs> Who needs words when you got dooby doo wah? <laughs> Grandma and Grandpa waged their way through life together, if I do say, successfully. They had a kind of playful banter between them that was traced with undertones of irritation, <laughs> but obviously infused with love. You know, it's this sort of bond that comes through the camaraderie that develops over decades of living life together side by side, constantly getting on each other's nerves. <laughs> Oh, l'amour! They were never particularly affectionate towards each other. So there were numerous times throughout my life where I caught myself wondering, are they actually in love with each other? <laughs> Not that I have any idea what in love is. I don't know. I have no idea what that is. I'm so confused. <laughs> But if you ever weren't sure if there was magic between them, all you had to do was see them dance together. Grandpa would maintain lascivious eye contact with Grandma with that wry grin on his face the whole time. And she would smile too as she looked away and played the part of the shy woman who was embarrassed yet pleased to be receiving such attentions from a handsome man. And they would glide together like swans on the surface of a lake. Grandpa wrote this song in a 3-4 time, which is a waltz, which is a dance that I saw them share together many times throughout my life. Grandpa doesn't do too much dancing these days. <laughs> The knees are shot, man. <laughs> but I imagine that as soon as they see each other again, they will be dancing. Thank you, Grandpa for writing such a gorgeous piece of music and for being willing to share it with all of us and for doing the most powerful thing that any of us can do in this world, for taking your pain and your loss and your suffering and transforming it into something beautiful. It is you and only you, dear You're the answer to my prayer you're the one I always prayed for Then God made you mine And I will cherish you dear Till the end of time Oh
presence is refreshing You alone light up the room You were truly sent from heaven And I love you so And I will cherish Hey, thanks for joining us this week on Me and My Song. Please come back next week as I take this same song to the chopping block to see what stays and what goes before we bring it in studio. And in case you were wondering, you don't have to pay me. But you can! Aha! Please do. <laughs> Seriously. You can donate here over at DonorBox. Give me a tip, give me a few bucks every month if you like what I'm doing. You can give me as many bucks every month as you want. Really, don't be shy. <laughs> People who give me a few bucks every month get special perks like uh, free music downloads and a chance to come on the show and extra videos. Yes, money gets special privileges in this world. I'm sorry I did not invent this system. I'm just trying to work my way around it. You can also help me out by buying my songs. You can download them here. You can like, subscribe, share, spread the word, spread the love. But hey, if you don't want to do any of that, or you want to do all of that, let me just thank you anyway, just for being here. That's just the thing that makes it possible for me to have someone to share with. So really, you're giving me the gift. I can't thank you enough. I can only hope that the gifts I have to offer here bring a lot of love and comfort and laughter and of course music into any and all of your lives for all who wish to enjoy. <laughs> this is Jess Kalea signing off. Come back next week and thank you for joining me this week here on Me and My Song and remember, keep singing your song. Me and my song Oh yeah!